Good evening, Trinity. Thank you for joining me for our Friday evening devotional. I want to take just a few minutes to talk with you about a passage of scripture that I've been reading, but I also wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about this weekend. Uh, I know I've already uh, put out a video with all kinds of instructions, and uh, it's uh, today is nothing like that. Um, I just wanted to tell you how excited I am to, to see you all again, uh, to gather with you again, to, to worship with you again. It's, um, it's been too long. It's been too long. When, when we closed down our, our public gatherings, I wasn't sure if it was the right thing to do or not. Um, but I just felt like we needed to. And a couple weeks in, I realized it was absolutely the right thing to do. And I'm glad that we, I'm not glad that we had to, but I'm glad that we did shut things down as far as public meeting when we did. But I don't think any of us anticipated when we stopped meeting in person that it would be 10 weeks uh, maybe off a week or uh, a week one one direction or the other on the math, but it's been about 10 weeks. I don't think any of us anticipated that. I don't think any anybody saw this coming. Um, I keep hearing people on the radio call this COVID-19 a black swan event. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what they meant by that, a black swan event. And then I heard somebody explain it. That a black swan is not something anybody expects to see, and so it you know we we expect every swan we see is going to be white, and so a black swan event is one of those where nobody saw that coming. Well, we know somebody saw it coming, but none of us saw it coming, and uh, I just never in my wildest dreams I thought maybe three, maybe at the outside four weeks, we'd uh, we'd suspend our gatherings, but I never thought it'd be this long. And so I am just beyond anxious to, to get back together with you. And so I, I tell you what, as we go into this weekend, let's spend some time in prayer. Let's spend some time in preparation. And uh, folks, I've said for a long time, we need to not make our Sunday mornings and our worship time we need to not make it business as usual. And I think we understand that now. If there's ever been a time that we need to come prepared, understanding the magnitude of what we get to do, of coming together and worshiping our Lord together in one place, I think if there's ever been a time for us to understand that and live that out, it's this week. And so spend some time in prayer over the weekend, uh, some time preparing yourself. Come expecting that we're going to worship God. Come expecting that we are going to pray to God together. Uh, come expecting that we're going to open God's word and we're going to hear from him together. Just come expecting an encounter with God. And uh, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for that time together with God with you. Yes, I've had my prayer time. I've had my own personal times of praise and worship. I've done all of that during this during this pandemic, but I'm ready to do it together with you. So today, I, I want to look at a, uh, a little bit of scripture with you. I was looking for something else this morning and happened to come across John 14, 1 again, and I've read it several times. Um, it's a familiar passage of scripture, but it just jumped out at me when I, when I stumbled across it this morning. John 14, 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus was talking to his disciples in a time when they were pretty troubled. They were pretty upset. It was toward the end of his earthly ministry. They were worried about the things that were going to happen. And he told them, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart, uh, don't let your feelings run amok and get you all twisted up. You believe in God believe in me. He was telling them the same confidence you have in the Father, you can have that same confidence in me. And he tells them, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Um, 
and there's some debate, some discussion about what exactly he meant by that. Some people say literal houses in heaven, mansions. Some people say it's a reference to the glorified body. I tend to lean toward that one, but I, I don't know for sure what heaven's going to look like. I just know Jesus is there, and that's where, so that's where I want to go. Um, but it's, it's a familiar passage of Scripture for that reason. So I started looking at it again, so what, re refreshing my memory about what were they troubled about. And it really goes back into, into John chapter 13. Peter wants to know where Jesus is going. It's, it's, right, after, uh, it, it's right after that instant when Jesus had identified G uh, Judas at the Last Supper as the one who was going to betray him. And he talked about going away from them, which they still didn't understand. Excuse me. So in John 13, 36, Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you, where are you going? And Jesus answered him. He, he said this, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. He said, you can't, right now, you can't go where I'm going, but eventually you will. And the implication there is just trust me. Just trust me in this. I'll take you where you need to be in the, at the right time. Soon you will be there. And that's when he, he then says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. As he's talking about the, the mansions there in John 14 too, he told them, I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to make a spot for you there. And if I go to prepare a place for you, verse 3, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. So he's talking about this place he's going to, and then he's going to, he's going to prepare for them. And in verse 5, Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? So Peter, uh, yeah, Peter begins very concerned, very troubled about where Jesus is going. And Jesus says, don't worry. I'm not leaving you forever. I'm leaving you for now, but you're going to come with me eventually. Then Thomas is worried about, well, how do we know the way there? We don't know the way. And so Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He's telling Thomas, don't worry about finding your way to, where, to, to, to God on your own. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you're going to the Father, I'm going to get you there. So Thomas, all your, your trouble and all your concern about how to find the way, don't worry about it. Just stick with me. I'm beginning to see a theme develop here. Don't worry about it. Just trust me. Stay with me. And he tells him, if you'd known me, if you really knew me, you'd know my father also. And from now on, you will know him and you will have seen him. So he's talked about going to the father and he's talked about what the father's like and how he reveals the father. And Philip speaks up and says, show us the father. If you'll just show us the father, that'll be enough. Just show us the father and that'll be enough. And Jesus said, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. And he goes on to talk more about his relationship with the Father and his relationship with the Holy Spirit. But I see a theme there. I see a pattern in this conversation. Peter is worried about where Jesus is going to go. And I think the implication is, but we want to come with you. Don't, don't leave us alone. And Jesus says, I'm not leaving you long term. I'm not leaving you forever. I'm going to take you uh, you're going to follow me eventually, just trust me. Then Thomas said, how can we know the way? How can we know the way to get there where you are, to follow you? To the... And Jesus said, 
Don't worry about it. I am the way. I'm the one who's going to get you to the Father. And Philip says, we need to understand the Father. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, then you know what the Father's like. The pattern I see here is this. They were coming to Jesus with these troubling questions, these deep spiritual questions that weighed so heavily on their hearts. They were coming to Jesus. I, I can almost hear the, I can almost read the panic in their voices. They were coming to Jesus looking for these answers. I've got to know these answers. I've got to figure this all out. I've got to know how this works. And Jesus says, you don't have to know how all this works. You don't have to figure this all out. Just trust me. Just trust me. Not only, guys, the questions and the problems that trouble your heart today, the spiritual things that weigh so heavily on you, the worries that keep you up at night, those unanswered things that nag at you and you've asked God repeatedly to, to show you, to help you understand, to, all those things, let me tell you. Jesus not only has the answer to all of those questions, Jesus is the answer to all of those questions. So today, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're someone who's trusted in him for salvation, realize that if you're looking in any place else for your answers to these deepest spiritual questions, these deepest problems, if you're looking for, any, if you're looking for answers anywhere else but in Jesus, you're looking in the wrong spot, looking for answers in all the wrong places. There's a, there's a statement I heard several weeks ago that made an impression on me that I think I've repeated here a few times in some of these devotionals or these online services. But that's that if you can trust Jesus for your salvation, <clears throat> you can trust Jesus with your situation. Folks, I don't know what situation you're dealing with. I don't know what it is that's got you worried. I don't know what it is that keeps you up at night. But I can tell you from God's word, and I can tell you from my own experience, Jesus not only has the answer, Jesus is the answer. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to necessarily tell you what the, uh, what the answer is. It doesn't mean he's going to explain every little detail to you to, to the satisfaction of your curiosity. Sometimes the closest we get to the answer is just realizing that we're going to trust the one who is the answer. And if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, your greatest spiritual need today is a relationship with God. You can't have it on your own because we were created to have this perfect fellowship, this perfect relationship with God. And yet it got destroyed. It got obliterated because of sin. Sin is any time we disobey God. And mankind, we, we sin. It's who we are. It's at the core of who we are. And so we sin. We've all sinned. And for all of us, that relationship with God is just non-existent. It's not what it is supposed to be. You and I could never do enough good. No matter how much we worried about it, no, mat no matter how much we struggled, no matter how troubled we get about it, we can never solve that problem and restore that relationship to God. So Jesus came to do it for us. He is the answer. He came and died on the cross, bearing full responsibility for our sins, to be punished in our place and to pay the full price for our sins so that you and I could be saved, so that our sins could be forgiven, so the slate could be wiped completely clean, and so that we could have a relationship with God. If you've, if you've felt distant from God, if that's your spiritual worry, if you feel like you can never live up to God's standards, that's absolutely right, but Jesus there again not only has the answer, he is the answer.
And today, if you'll simply trust him, if you'll talk to God, you'll acknowledge your sin, you'll acknowledge that you believe Jesus Christ died to pay for your sins and he rose again, and then ask God to forgive you because of what Jesus did. We have the promise of his word that he'll save you, he'll forgive you. He'll give you that relationship with him because of what Jesus did. Folks, whatever it is you're looking for spiritually today, Jesus not only has the answer, Jesus is the answer. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for each of those who have tuned in today. God, I just pray that you'd give them a, a blessing from your word. I pray that they would understand what they've heard today, that Jesus not only has the answer to their spiritual problems, he is the answer. Lord, whatever they stand in need of, God, I pray that they would come to Jesus and find rest and find refuge in him from all the worries. And Father, for those who, who may be listening who've never trusted Jesus as their Savior, I pray that today would be the day that they would understand and that they would, uh, that they would understand what Jesus did for them and that they would respond in faith. Lord, we love you and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you at 1030 on Sunday. Can't wait. If you're not able to be here for some reason, we'll still broadcast on Facebook Live. But if you can be here, if you feel safe being here, man, we sure would love to see you.